Jake Ludington here at HP Discover, and I'm here with Chris Nukitbev and Business Outcome Service Management. Can you tell me a little bit about what that is? Yes. Business Outcome Service Management is a departure from the normal way to operate complex ecosystems, where we typically are driven by issues and problems. There's an issue with your engine in your car, you call your mechanic, but you already lost your plane, right? This is the issue that we're facing with big SAP-centric ecosystems, and we're trying to understand how do they, how business processes can be the driver of change for IT. To do that, we are redocumenting business processes, understanding which are the key components, the critical components in such a process, like order to cash. And I was giving you an example around billing. Um, what are the metrics behind billing? It could be the number of invoices you've sent. It could be the number of invoices that have been sent to the customer or to accounting. And these metrics and their measurements can drive behavior for IT operations. So business outcome service management is a focus on the business rather than an IT issue. So one of the things that I, I'm going to key in on here is you're talking about redocumenting the business processes. Now traditionally, that's something that you bring a group of consultants in and they look at the whole system from the, the, the they work from the finish and go back to the start. And but it sounds to me like this is something different. Yeah, this is this is one of the major differences and the reason why the whole offering is is, is possible. Um, because there is an issue with the consultative approach too. If you start redocumenting a process, let's say order to cash, and now you bought a new company. Oh gosh, now you're gonna have more variants of that order to cash process. Do you have to start the whole effort again? And most companies don't. So sustainable redocumentation of business processes and the underlying ecosystem is something that has matured the last three years. And there are tools we are leveraging in HP and we have been building ourselves and also leveraging external tools that helps you to really understand what is happening within a large solution and even across solutions. An example is trade promotions management. It's, um, it's a process that runs throughout an ERP system, a CRM system, a BW system, and it has to align with the supply chain management system. So this process needs to connect to a multitude of applications. This redocumentation is something that we're doing currently and we are uploading the finished libraries of processes and all their artifacts within Solution Manager. In Solution Manager, which is SAP's ALM toolset, uh, from there we can actually export that library to testing tools, to change management tools, to incident management tools, and naturally also to business process monitoring tools. So that is one thing. The second thing is, within that order to cash process, let's say billing, what are the metrics that are relevant in billing? And this is something really, really new. We've been working with SAP for the last four years to figure out what are the key metrics for key artifacts. And they have provided now a database of around a thousand business objects that have approximately 10 to 20 metrics each. So we're talking about a, a humongous repository of metrics. So where do you start? Even if you have the repository and you have the benchmarks, where do you actually start? So we have developed a, a, a tool that enables you to see the variations of these metrics within each of the artifacts in real time. From there, we can then understand which are the ones that are affecting business process performance. And then, of course, as we're monitoring, we can connect these metrics to individuals. So the order to cast global process owner will get an alert. Something is wrong with billing. You know, we were supposed to send 10,000 documents. We just sent five. And from there, we can actually have an organizational action. Or if it is a real issue with IT, it can actually be transferred to the technical team that will then deep dive into understanding what's going on in the billing system. So we are saving on average 50 to 80% of the um, of the detect to resolve if we actually go one step higher. Now, this sounds to me like uh, this is kind of a fundamental shift because typically the, the business process or the business operations team is very separated from IT, but this sounds like business process and IT kind of collaborating around 
identifying solutions uh, almost before they happen, but maybe not quite before they happen? I, I mean, as they're happening, but they're not affecting the user. It's like you're driving your car and your car is telling you, you know, a couple of weeks before that the spark plugs need to be changed rather than the day that you're driving to the airport to catch your plane, right? Um, this, this kind of an early alert is really important and because business processes are increasingly digitized, there needs to be a better link between the process owners and the application and infrastructure owners in a particular solution. Until now, we only had handovers, only handovers. It's like um, small fortresses, and each of these fortresses are fighting a war. Actually, they should work together. The, what was missing was data. We didn't have the, the real data about what is happening in a process. It's extremely interesting for an application owner, uh, for a process owner, and certainly for an infrastructure owner to know that there is a latency in an infrastructure interface that is application driven, but is actually infrastructure enabled. Uh, these guys never really worked together. They worked in sequence rather than in a team together. And this is what we're finding out. The customers were implementing these things. We see these three groups getting closer together and they understand. And finally, for the business process owners, they get the real facts to build value cases for enablement, movement to cloud, uh, transition to HANA. It, the data gives them the real the real information what's going on rather than subsequent information or hearsay right about business users moaning about MRP performance for example in a large manufacturer right uh, it's something that will give them the data for them to act and so how does the the business outcomes team um, kind of empower these companies to act they do that through a transformation program um, typically when we are taking over very large um, SAP ecosystems and even non-SAP ecosystems actually, a combination, right? Um, we are putting together a transformation program that lasts between 12 months to 36 months depending on the size of the company and the maturity of the company. Um, the redocumentation aspect that you raised before is one of the first things we do. But we can actually implement also process templates and process template metrics with the solution manager business process monitoring tool very fast. So we can actually very easy and fast start to deliver results to the process owners, to the application owners. Now when we are finished with redocumentation, then we transfer the real process. And then we do a rerun around the metrics. At the end of the half of the transformation, we are converting ourselves, our contract, to BSLAs. So we move from the technical SLAs we sign typically a contract on, and then we evolve them to be SLAs. And the beauty of it is that the empowerment then happens through these BSLAs, and that they're dynamic, they will be changing. And by, and by BSLA you mean business SLA? A business SLA. Instead of writing an SLA and server availability, even if I'm not running applications and I'm running ITO, I'm very interested as an ITO delivery lead to understand what is the impact of infrastructure on the business. So if I sign a contract on billing and I'm responsible for the whole ECC system, these will be one of the key indicators of our performance. So having green SLAs on the technical layer might not necessarily mean that they're green on the business layer. And that is the difference between technical and business SLAs. We're sharing the risk, actually. That's what we're doing. That's an interesting new approach because, I mean, typically, uh, everything has been driven by technical SLAs. If the, if the system is up, it must be up, regardless of whether it's actually putting out useful information or not. Correct. A wonderful example was also, even within this business process monitoring construct, we have gone wrong a couple of times. An example was batch jobs. A batch job takes a particular set of transactions and executes them while you sleep, and then in the morning there's a report for you. Now, we, we actually, when we were asking the users what is the most important part for you in this particular process, they said, it's the job. We were monitoring the job. Jobs were green, but the user faces were red. Because then we found out there might be a transactional issue, right? The job executes the transaction correctly, but the transaction never really completes, right? So this is a, you really need tooling to start deep diving into what is going on. And this is not statistics. Statistics comes after, right? But tooling to really understand what are the metrics and how do they enable the particular process. 
this is a really big differentiator we have here. And this is something new. It is definitely something new. Thanks it for is. sharing. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Jake.